welcome all. I must say, this is, this is my first international webinar. Now, normally when, I am, uh, normally when I'm doing anything on my laptop, I'm of uh, a slightly older generation, and I, I usually rely on my 12-year-old or 10-year-old daughter to help me, get, help me get through this. So if I become technologically defunct at any point, my, my, my apologies. I've got Jamie here to help me. But you should have seen me 15 minutes ago when I was setting up. I had three other members of staff here help, helping me along. I'm amazing at a number of things, but dealing with new technologies is not always my, uh, not always my forte. Having said that, we have a lot of people here at the university who are. Um, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the University for Creative Arts as a whole, who we are, where we are. Um, and I'm also going to talk a little bit about the English creative education system. So you get a sense of the value of what we do at the University for Creative Arts and the way it feeds into um, ideas around business, creative futures, and global creative economies. Okay. Um, as Jamie said, do um, ask us questions as you go through. Jamie's gonna be on the other line answering some of the stuff in the chat. When I go into the presentation, I won't be able to see the chat, but we'll have 10 minutes at the end where I can answer any other, any other questions. Okay, so I'm going to now share the presentation. And Jamie showed me how to do this, so I'm gonna do this now. Now, hopefully, and Jamie will nod at me. He's yes. got a thumbs up. Yep. I've got a thumbs, up, good. Yep. thumbs up from Jamie um, to say that you should now see my opening opening slide. If you can't see it, then do email, do put in the chat to Jamie, and I'll let I'll let him sort that out. But you should all be able to hear me perfectly okay. Okay. So welcome, welcome to welcome to my small talk. As Jamie said, I'm the assistant vice chancellor for University for the Creative Arts, and I have <laughs> oversight of all the academic um, provision. Our university has around six and a half thousand students and we are based in the southeast of England. Um, so just on the outskirts of, of London in some beautiful towns and I'll talk to you a little bit about those so you can see those in a second as well. And uh, we have been delivering art and design education and creative education, preparing people for, for business and the creative industries um, for over 150 years. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of an insight into uh, fine art education, and of course I would, I'm a professor of fine art education, but hopefully it won't be too boring, and hopefully it will fit into everything that I'm, that I'm saying about the university as well, and you'll get a real sense of where we've come from as a university and our vision moving forward. So there's kind of two parts to what I'm talking about, the university itself and the creative industries. And I'm going to talk about both those things at the same time as I go through, as I go through my presentation. We have three key areas of focus within the university. At the, start, at the top of that is this idea of creativity underpinning everything we do. So the arts is only a part of that. We're also very, very aware that the role that creative education can play in driving national and global economies through the use of technology as well. So we often, if we're, if we're condensing the university um, focus into three words, it would be arts, business, and technology. Of course, I get this opportunity to present to you, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna present some of the amazing statistics around the university. I've been working for the university for 16 years, and I've done a number of things while I've been at the university here. I've taught on our wonderful further education courses. I ran the 3D pathway there. I myself am a, am a sculptor, and I do a lot of work in the public realm. And, and then I've taught on undergraduate programs in model making and in fine art and in design, branding and marketing. And I have taught on our master's programs in curation, in fine art, in design. And then I've also run our research degrees, so our, our PhD. So I've, over a period of time leading up to the roles that I have now as the assistant vice chancellor, I've been able to have, have the wonderful opportunity of working in various different departments and seeing the incredible journey that our university has been on. Over the, last, um, over the last 15 years or so while I've, I've been a part of the university. So we are in all the league tables in the UK, and that's, if you don't know, every university in, um, in the United Kingdom is ranked according to other universities in the, right, in the United Kingdom based on a number of things. The quality of the work the students produce, the students' sense of their own experience, 
the quality of teaching and learning that takes place. And we've ranked number one for the last two years in all the league tables. And we're actually the highest ranked specialist university. So that's any university that just teaches one thing, like you might have a university that just teaches engineering or one that just teaches um, languages. Well, for all the universities that just teach art and design, creative education, we're the, we're the, we're the number one specialist in the country and we're the number one specialist, of course, art and design institution in the country. We're the second largest provider of creative art and design education in Europe. So we can draw upon a whole range of experience um, from business and our staff expertise um, to support over six and a half thousand students um, that are coming to us from across the globe, um, from some of the countries I saw that you, you already, when you signed in, you said you were, where you were from. We have students from all across the, all across the world coming to join us um, for our specialist arts education. We're also um, very proud to have been named the Modern University of the Year. So in the United Kingdom, we have two types of university. We have one type of university, but we have universities that were um, in existence, have been in existence leading back even into the 14th century. Um, but we had a, a, a large number of organizations that were technical um, colleges, universities. And then in the early 1990s, the government in the United Kingdom decided that all of those should just be called universities. And the new ones that came in, and there were about twice as many new ones as there were old ones, are called the modern universities. And we were declared the modern university of the year um, last year, and it's an accolade we're very, very proud of. We were also awarded, you can see from this slide, something called TEF Gold. TEF stands for Teaching Excellence Framework. And it's a, it's a measure of the standard of our university provision. All universities um, are measured in, in regard to the, uh, the TEF, the Teacher Excellence Framework. And very few receive gold, but we were uh, very proud, not surprised, but very proud to um, be awarded a TEF gold last year um, as well. And that stays with us for, for, for a number of years. So you can see that our focus on specialist arts education has brought us a lot of accolades and leaves us as the number one specialist um, art and design creative education um, university in the, in the country. I just want to talk a little bit about art and design education in this country and the idea of being a specialist art and design creative education provider. You, you'll see when you're looking for potential courses to study on that many universities will have courses in architecture or fashion or photography or ceramics, for example. Um, but they're often in universities that are also providing education in a number of other areas, whether it's the sciences, whether it's engineering, um, whether it's languages. And what we, the history that we come from in the United Kingdom is from back in the 19th century, when almost every town in the, in the country in the United Kingdom, almost every town had an art school or an art college. What people realized in this country in the middle of the 19th century was, and we were, remember we were in the Industrial Revolution, coming out of the Industrial Revolution at that point, was that for people to be entrepreneurial, for people who were starting their own businesses to think differently about the way in which they approach their business, they needed a certain way of thinking that wasn't the conventional way of thinking, which wasn't the normal way in which everybody else was thinking about things. And so they realized that artists, designers, architects, creative people, seemed to view the world in ways that were slightly different to the way that everybody else viewed the world. And that if we could harness that kind of creative thinking and imaginative thinking through education that we would be able to support businesses as they as they grew now that is true now as it was true then now over the years over the last 150 years or so a number of those art schools across the country joined together with other art schools in close towns and then eventually became part of big universities and we're no different 
I'm sitting here today in one of our four campuses that we have for the university, our Rochester campus, where we teach um, fashion and we teach photography and our further education courses um, alongside hair and makeup and um, jewellery uh, jewelry design courses. And we used to be the, the Medway School of Art and Design. And then we joined with um, the Maidstone School of Art and Design, which is another town in the, in the county, in the, in the area that we live with in the southeast of England, and with the, um, the Canterbury College of Art and Design, and became the Kent Institute of Art and Design. Kent is the area, it's the region that we live in. And then we joined later on with a series of other art, art schools that were in particular towns in another part, of, uh, in another district that's next door to Kent in, uh, in Surrey, and we became the University for the Creative Arts. So we come out of a long history of just teaching art and design. And the reason we decided just to teach art and design was because we still hold on to that original belief that we had 150 years ago. The kind of education that you get, the creative education that you get in a specialist arts um, organization like ours, enables you to think in a way that can provide businesses, global economy with entrepreneurship and opportunities to think differently about the way in which we, we, we live in the world. It's a really important thing. What I often say to the new students who join me at the beginning of the beginning of the year, and I'll gather them all in together on each campus and I'll, I'll have a conversation with them about um, what it means to be an artist and designer. And I talk to them about the one responsibility you have, whether you're a fashion designer, whether you're a jewelry designer, whether you're an architect, and that is to or two things. The first thing is to find out what you're interested in. What is it about the world that you are particularly interested in? To understand that thing in a way that understands how everybody else sees it, and then to find a new way of seeing it, a new perspective on it. So, for example, I'm sitting here, and Jamie's going to look at me strangely now as I do this. You might be able to see me. So I'm sitting here in, a, in, a, in an office, and I'm sitting, on a, I'm sitting on a chair, okay? Now, usually when we're thinking of chairs, we think of them as things that we're gonna sit on. So I'm, I'm sitting on it now, it's very, very comfortable. Everybody thinks of chairs as something you sit on. But actually, um, if, a, if a leak was coming out the window, uh, sorry, out, the, out of the ceiling here, there are no leaks, but we'll imagine there's a leak. I might suddenly think, well, this actually becomes quite a good, quite a good hat for me to use to protect me from the rain. Alternatively, I've been playing football for about 30 years, since I was very little, and I've got very bad knees. Now, I know that actually, if I change the angle that I'm sitting at, so I can maybe just sit on the floor here, you know, and I could raise my knee up, so it's there, and I could give my lecture from being on the floor, okay, I know that it might seem very strange for people to watch, but actually, it's very, very good for the blood flow to my knee, and it will help me out when I'm walking a little bit later on. So, that idea, that idea that we take what everybody else takes for granted, and we find a new way of thinking about that thing, has advantages for businesses. And we have graduates who leave our university, maybe they studied sculpture, um, but they go on to, actually, I had a student who contacted me a month or so ago. He's just got a job with a hedge fund, working for a big hedge fund organization with banks. Okay? Now, he's not trained in that area, but because he comes from a fine art background, he's able to take any situation, any problem, and look at it in a way that nobody else has looked at it before. So that's the one challenge we have as artists and designers and creative thinkers, to find the thing we're interested in or the things that we're interested in, focus on them and find the other way of looking at them. And then we present that out to the world. And there's something quite revolutionary in that idea. There's something quite utopian and optimistic about that idea. The idea that if we see the world differently to the way we see it, if we can imagine it differently, we are imagining the possibility that our lives might be improved or changed or different. So it doesn't matter whether you're interested, I say to students, it doesn't matter if you're interested in North African politics or skateboard culture, it doesn't matter. 
the idea of thinking of that thing differently and offering it to the world and saying to the world, what if you look at this differently? Does it change the way in which you have to understand your place in the world? It's quite a revolutionary moment and it's quite a responsibility for us as artists. So one, find the thing you're interested in. Two, find how everybody else thinks about that. Three, find your own way of thinking about that. And then four, offer that out to the world to change it. And I think within that idea, that's a very, very simple idea, and it's very difficult to be an art, a, a, a creative sometimes, within that, that idea, within that process, is the heart of creative education in the United Kingdom. And it's one reason why we've held on to being a specialist creative um, art and design institution, even though we may have had the option at various points in our 150 year um, existence to have joined up with larger universities, because we think we will have diluted that idea. Okay, so that's a short history of uh, art and design, creative education in the United Kingdom, and why it was important in the 19th century, and why it's maybe even more important now. Um, you'll see from the slide that's up on the screen that we teach across a range of subjects from the performing arts, graphic and illustration, graphic design, illustration, games, arts, fine art, film, media, um, fashion, craft and design, a whole range of different um, areas. And I'm going to flip through some slides where we do. you can see again the Tef, the Tef Gold there, that, which, which is talking about our incredible facilities. And we'll have a look at some of those as well. And those subjects that I just mentioned are taught by people who are both teachers and also people in the actual profession. So a lot of our academics who are working for us are either working as researchers, so they're developing new ideas and technologies that are informing the industry, often working for other organizations in that regard, and some who are running their own businesses. So they're creatives who are working for companies I think in, in fashion, I was just talking to one of our fashion students earlier, and they're doing a project with Nike at the moment. And that's because one of our staff members works for Nike, and they've made that connection for our students. So that idea of the live projects is also really, really important. So in every single one of those subjects that I were up on, the list, up on that list on that earlier slide, the kind of incredible staff that we have delivering on our courses are involved in both teaching those subjects and also being at the forefront of those, in, those subjects within industry and within, and within business as well. I mentioned earlier that I'm at our Rochester campus. Um, you'll see on the map that I've just put up on the screen that we have four campuses. We've got a, um, a couple of dots on there as well. One is, one is London, so you can see how closely located we are to London. And then we have two smaller dots, Maidstone Studios and the Royal School of Needlework. And I'll talk a little bit about those two places in a second, because we also deliver courses away from our campuses for a couple of our, couple of our disciplines. And it's an incredible kind of setup that we have that's partnered with business. Uh, but you see, we're in Canterbury. I live just south of Canterbury, right on the coast there, right on the edge of where the, the map of England is, um, in a place called Folkestone. And I have a view um, from where I live across to, across to France, um, it's only 20 miles away in a boat. Um, if I was to swim it, it would probably take me about eight hours, probably to get about, you know, maybe 400 yards out. But there are people that do swim across the channel from the town that, the town that, I, town that I live at. Um, so we're very close to Europe. Um, and we've done partnership projects with Europe from particularly our courses in Rochester and Canterbury that are very, very close there. And we have a campus at Epsom and at Farnham as well. All our campuses are within 50 minutes of London on the train, so very, very close um, to London. And our students will often take the opportunity to either get the train or the bus up at weekends. And we encourage them to do that, to go and see a number of the, uh, the shows, exhibitions, um, museums, and some of the cultural events that are taking place there. And you can live outside of London, very, very close to London, and it's not the cost, it has nowhere near the same cost of, of trying to afford to, to, to live in, uh, live in, the, in the capital. Um, so we're close enough to the capital, um, but far enough out that it brings the cost down ever so slightly. So a lot of students really, really enjoy um, living also in much more, uh, much kind of smaller 
um, smaller towns. Some of them are in beautiful parts of the countryside. Um, and students do do work that explores some of that, um, some of that countryside as well. I've got a lot of fine art students that, that, that like, to, like to do that, um, do that too. Okay, so at Canterbury, I said we talk different, we, we deliver different subjects on different campuses, or we focus on those. All our campuses do what we call pre-degree courses, so further education courses, and we have international um, further education courses as well. And we have a lot of international students doing those with us. But the, the, the focus at um, Canterbury is around architecture, creative computing, and interior architecture. We have the famous Canterbury School of Architecture based at our, uh, at our campus at Canterbury. And then fine art, graphic design, illustration, and animation as well. And it's a beautiful city. Um, the photograph that you can see is the um, River Stour that runs through the middle of Canterbury. And in, in the summer when the weather's nice, it's always interesting when they take marketing photographs, that they always take them in the summer. It always looks absolutely beautiful in the summer. Um, and uh, you can take the little boat rides up and down the, the river. It's absolutely beautiful. So it's a, a very old historic um, city and very famous for its, um, its literature and its Roman history as well. And I mentioned earlier our, um, our relationship to business. We've just started last year our business school for the creative industries. It's the first business school for the creative industries in the United, in the United Kingdom and the world, I think. Um, and that's based at our Epsom campus, which focuses on business, business management, advertising, um, fashion subjects. We teach graphic design there as well. And all of the journalism, fashion promotion um, areas that surround those subjects, subjects too. And that's on the tube line the underground line that runs into London. So you can get into the centre of London from Epsom in, in 20 minutes, 25 minutes, which, is, uh, which our students really, really uh, enjoy. And there's a great international community, both at Epsom, but also at, um, at all, our, all our campuses. And then we have Farnham, which is the biggest of our campuses. Um, Canterbury, Rochester and Epsom all have around 1,200 students. And at Farnham, we have around uh, 2,500 students. And we teach the greatest range of subjects. Um, at Farnham. So we've got photography, music and performing arts, we've got our uh, film production course which is which is world famous, um, fashion and textiles is delivered there alongside computer games and fine art um, animation as well. It's a beautiful, um, beautiful Surrey town, um, really quintessentially English and again a train ride that's about 50, 55 minutes into, into London. Um, but it's the biggest of our, biggest of our campuses um, and an absolutely beautiful, beautiful town. So the, the environments in which you're learning, the towns in which you're learning, are historic English towns that go back millennia and those histories are still there. So where I am today at, at Rochester, we, the photograph you see there is Rochester Castle. It's about a 10 minute walk down the hill from where we are at Rochester. In fact, where, where the campus is at Rochester is built on a, um, an old Napoleonic fort from the, from the 18th century. Um, it's on the same site, but of course much, much more modern um, than that. And we have incredible views across, uh, across the local area. We're the highest point in the whole of the, in the, whole of the region here um, and gives our students an incredible vista. When you're having a stressful day, or your project is really, really intense, and you just need to give yourself a little bit of air. You can look out the window and you see the beautiful River Medway running through the town in the distance. And it can focus you again to get back on, um, get back on with your studies. At Rochester, we have a focus on um, fashion subjects and photography sub subjects. We have a new makeup and hair design course, which is extremely popular um, and designed for theatre, film and production alongside our, um, our pre-degree courses, our, our further education. Um, courses too. So each campus is, is slightly different. I mentioned earlier um, those two dots that were on the map, Maidstone TV Studios and Royal School of Needlework. I'm just going to talk very briefly about those. Maidstone TV Studios, um, it's about a 15 minute uh, journey from our Rochester campus and our students on that course often use our Rochester campus. But Maidstone TV Studios is the biggest independent TV studios in the United Kingdom. And our television production course is based inside Maidstone TV Studios. So the students studying on that course 
are doing, as they're studying, they're doing work experience on some quite famous programs here in the United Kingdom, having lunch with TV professionals, um, production experts, and learning alongside and from, in both formal and informal ways, people that are heart, at the heart of the TV production industry in, in this country. And so it's an example of where we start to think about how you can deliver creative education in the context of live business and live industry. So whatever course you're on, you will always be doing live projects that are being commissioned by large companies, small companies, creative industry companies. But there's an example of where we actually base the actual program itself and the delivery of the program in that context. The other, the other incredible, um, uh, I put, we put it in here, I put it in here because it, the venue is incredible. You can see in the bottom right hand corner, um, this incredible castle like structure. That's Hampton Court. That was built by one of our famous kings, Henry VIII, um, back in the 16th century. And uh, he built it as a getaway to get, out of, um, to get out of the city for his own little city breaks. And that's about 20 minutes outside the, the center, of, center of London. And students that are studying um, our um, needlework course, undergraduate needlework course at the Royal School of Needlework, um, actually go through that gate every morning to get to their classes. And you can see in the top right hand corner, there's a student there working. But they're learning techniques that are 1500, 1600 years old. And as I was saying earlier, trying to understand how everybody else has used that and then take another position to think about how they might use those techniques differently. So think about the example I spoke about earlier with the, with, with the chair. So that's the challenge for all our students. If you're learning very traditional techniques alongside new digital techniques, um, it, the question isn't, can you learn that technique? The question is, how can you use that to think about the thing you're interested in differently, to think about the world differently, and to think about the way in which people who use those, those objects that you're making, designing, um, environments you're um, imagining, um, how they might experience and think about the world differently. So that's another great example of how our students will um, operate sometimes in other environments, um, sometimes very, very special environments, um, to do something that's really, really specific. As with all good universities, you would expect there would be strong support for students on the journey. Being an artist is, is quite a, I think often more difficult. In one sense, it's, it's, it's easier than other subjects because, um, or being a creative, because those of us who want to go into studying creative subjects, in our heart, feel that it's something really, really important to us. Okay. So in that sense, choosing to study something creative is often a very personal um, and easy decision to make. Being a creative is very, very difficult. And I think that I can't think of any other subject you might study, whether you're studying a language or whether you're studying science or whether you're studying um, mathematics, where you have to think of something in a way that nobody else has thought of, so that it's very personal to you, to make something that's really personal, that only you could have made, and then to offer it to the world and say, look at what I've done, now judge me. Judge what I've done. It's so difficult because it's very, very personal to you. And so part of that creative education is to become resilient to the idea that you, every time you ask for judgment on something that you've done, you're opening yourself up quite personally to somebody else having a view of something that is really, really important to you. In a way, I think we don't do in any other subject, any other discipline you might study in university. And so having an environment where everybody understands that, being a specialist institution is really, really important. Having everybody in our libraries, everybody in our student services, everybody in the accommodation, um, everybody who is supporting your studies, and it can be difficult sometimes, and we can struggle sometimes, and being away from home isn't always easy, um, understands that. And because we, we are running relatively small 
um, campuses with between a thousand and two and a half students. Everybody knows everybody and it's quite family oriented and it's very, very supportive of that. So I think the offer that we give as a university, being specialists, being the size that we are, enables students to feel supported in a way that they wouldn't anywhere else. And of course, um, and my daughter-in-law has, has just signed up to apply to the university. And the first question that she asked was, what are the extra clubs that are going on? She wasn't asking about what she was gonna study, but she wanted to know what the other students did outside of the study time. And we have an incredible student union, an award-winning student union. Um, award-winning because we're operating quite small campuses, but providing incredible opportunities for our students and our students to create new clubs, to be part of clubs that we already run. And we have, um, actually it says in the slide here, 50 sports clubs and societies, but actually um, this year, I think we've hit 70 sports clubs and societies. Um, and they provide the other side of being a student, that opportunity to meet new people, um, to make new friends, because those are the people who are gonna be your, some of your main contacts when you, when you leave a university. Your first network that you create as a creative are the students you will study alongside. And so the student union do a lot to support our students in a number of ways, but also providing clubs and, clubs and societies. So I've spoken a lot in my talk about the idea of business being linked to creativity, particularly around that idea of imagination, thinking differently, finding alternative perspectives, and that being at the heart of this idea of entrepreneurship that drives um, business in terms of business always trying to gain an advantage from, um, from its competitors. And I think as create students of creativity, um, we're able to do that in a way that nobody else does. Here in the UK, there are three and a half, almost three and a half million of the jobs that, that people have form part of the creative um, economy. It's a massive, a massive, massive number. And it's worth over 92 billion pounds a year to the British economy, the, uh, the creative industries. It's the fastest growing sector of the economy um, in this country. And so we're prime place for our students to connect up to some of those companies to create another network, um, but also to create opportunities um, for thinking about their, their future um, connections outside and beyond university. And we have a lot of connections internationally, um, but also about doing live projects while they're with us on, on course. As I said, it's growing twice as fast, almost twice as fast as any other um, sector within the, the UK economy. It's worth over one in 11 jobs. And if you look at, I don't know how well you can see this slide on your screens, but it's looking at the different areas that graduates from university um, come from and the employment rates, how successful they are in getting jobs after leaving university within um, six, 15 months, and that six to 15 month period after they leave university. And the creative arts is the highest of any area within, um, uh, within UK educational sector. Second to that is business and administrative um, studies. And we combine both in thinking about business in relation to the, uh, the, creative, uh, the creative arts and creative education. And they both sit at around 80% in terms of students within employment nationally after, after graduating from universities. So nationally, that's, that's 80%, but we, and I don't, think I've got, I don't know if I've got a slide for it, I don't think I have, but we as a university sit at 97%. So while the general UK creative education sits at 80%, which is still higher, the highest in the, in the, in the country, we sit at 97% as an institution, and it maybe tells you something about why we are number one in all those, in all those league tables. There's a little map here you can see of the breakdown in the United Kingdom. There's a little map of the United Kingdom here. Um, and if it looks like I'm looking away from the screen, it's because I've got another screen with the map on, and, uh, and I have the temptation to point at that screen over there with my arm sticks up. Um, but you can see 45% of the jobs within 
the United Kingdom within the creative industries, sit within the southeast of England, right where we are, our four campuses are. Um, and so that's what provides us with those incredible opportunities to connect up with business that sometimes other arts specialist institutions or other art design architecture courses based in bigger universities just don't have the opportunity, um, don't have the opportunity to do. And again, that's why this all translates into us being 13th in the, um, in the league table. This is the Guardian University league tables. Um, there's no other specialist institutions above us and there's no other creative arts um, organizations that sit above us either. So we're very, very proud of it. It's absolutely unheard of um, that somebody would be this high in the league table. So it just shows you, um, I think as much for me as somebody thinking about the staff who work for me here, um, how great they are, at what they do, and how much they really, really care about the education uh, that we provide for, for, for all our students. Okay, so this is the last slide that is just to me to say thank you for spending half an hour of your time, um, 40 minutes of your time, listening to me talk about a number of things. I hope it was informative. I hope it was useful. And I'm gonna come out of the presentation now so you can just see me now, I think. Is that correct, Jamie? Uh, that's right. Yeah, welcome back, Terry. Yep. And we go, we'll go into seeing if I can answer any of, the, any of the questions that have come up while I've been talking. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to say a very big thank you on behalf of our students and myself um, for presenting, Terry. That was a fascinating presentation. Great to learn about some of the opportunities you have available. So thank you. Um, I can see a few students in the chat um, are adding some comments now and also in the Q&A. Um, I don't know if you can see them just now. I can see some of the chat questions and I can see some of the questions. So we've got um, Mahish who's asked, I'm not my 30s, can I study and work at the same, the same time? Hmm. So yes, we do have a number of our students who are studying and working at the same at the same time it's slightly different for international students who are, who are studying in the UK and there is a limit on the number of hours that you can work and that will be part of your visa agreements but there's a number of voluntary things that you can also do at the, at the same time I know Mahesh is probably thinking I need to afford to be able to do some of these things as well so the visa restrictions will only allow you to work a certain uh, number of hours, but you can look at your own visa restrictions and, and see that. But a lot of our students do try to find those opportunities to to, to work where they where they can whilst they're with us. Um, I hope that answers your answers your question. Um, um, Aparna has asked. I'm a business administration student. I would love to do my higher education abroad. I am appearing for the IELTS examination within a week. Well, good luck with that, Aparna. Um, we're with you in spirit. Could you suggest me some of the best universities, my, vast, my master's in business administration? Well, I'm only going to suggest us. <laughs> um, in terms of, if you're interested in the creative industries, then we're absolutely the place to come to um, for business administration. I think if you're looking for other areas to study in, if it's around business administration as it relates, relates to engineering, then I think it's good to look for those specialist universities or larger faculty universities that offer those courses. But certainly for creative industries, we're the only one in the uh, only one in the UK that has a specialist business school just for the creative in um, creative industries. Um, Patchu has asked, "Do we collaborate with the BBC?" We don't have a central collaboration with the BBC in terms of a partnership, but we we have in the past. Our students have worked with. Um, friends, colleagues, parts of the BBC. Um, we've had guest lectures that come from the BBC. I spoke earlier about the TV production um, course that we run um, at our Maidstone television studios. And a lot of the people who are working there, producing, um, not the students, but the, the industry people who are working there, are working for those large organizations. We have a large number that are producing TV production in this country. Um, so although we don't have a specific partnership with the BBC, um, our students studying that area, in that area do occasionally have projects that they run with those, but are working with people in a much broader 
um, sense of the industry than, than, than just the, just the, the BBC. Um, Patrick has asked whether we can show the website of this. I'm not sure exactly what you mean there, um, Pacho. Are you talking about the university uh, website? Jamie, I'll see if you can just send a link to our university website. Sure, I can pop that in the chat just now. Thank there you. Go, Pacho. hope that's what you're looking for. And then we have somebody anonymous who's asked, do we offer any um, scholarships? Yes, we do offer scholarships and you can go onto our university website that Jamie's going to put the link to and you can see the scholarships that we do offer um, interna to international students, um, to students who are already studying with us. We have many students who study with us on an undergraduate course and then stay with us to do a master's and we give them discount on the master's courses. We have some students that come and do a further education course with us and then do a degree and then do a master's and I've got one student who's done all of those and is now doing a PhD, been with us for, for, for eight years now, seven, eight years. Um, and we have scholarships for each of those. So um, I think it's worth finding that. Jamie will find that link on our website. But if you just type in UCA scholarships, hmm. it will just come up in, 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 in Google as well. Hmm. Aparna has asked the same, same question. Um, so I, I appreciate that that's really, really important um, to people. Um, to see any way they might save a little bit of money um, to take the opportunity to come and uh, come and study with us. So that, those are the questions we have in the in the Q in the Q and A. I'm going to scan through the the chat questions. Um, a lot of people saying where they're from. Oh, amazing! We've got some people from Australia. We've got some people from um, Vietnam, from China, um, South Korea, um, United States. Um, oh, great. Somebody's asked how many years of experience I have in this university. Okay, well, I've been a teacher for, uh, I'm going to give my age away. I was actually a student here at, at, at UCA. I studied on our further education course uh, back in the late 1980s. Um, so that's what, the 90s, it's almost 30, almost 30 years ago. And then um, I came back to do a partnership PhD while I was here as well. So I studied here for a couple of years later on. I've been a teacher for over, for almost 20 years. And I've taught, I started as a high school teacher, as a secondary school teacher, um, teaching art and design. Um, and I've taught in primary schools, so kindergarten schools, and then at um, higher education as well. So I've taught all the way through those, but I've been at the University for the Creative Arts now for, for 15 years in, in, a number of, in a number of jobs. And it's, I must say, it's one of the most, um, one of the most enjoyable things I think I could imagine uh, doing as, a, as, a, as an artist, as a designer, as a, as a, as a, as a teacher. Um, somebody else has asked, welcome everyone to Rimna. I feel like, oh, that was you, um, Jamie, asking, um, question about the BBC. Um, somebody says, I'm looking for a person to help me with, help me studying my English. Now, obviously, I can't talk about where in the town that you're living in or the country you're living in, where you can um, find that English support. But I'm sure there are people there. And if you talk to some of our agents that are out there, or um, we can probably point you in the right direction. For international students that study with us, whilst you're studying with us, we do provide a program free of charge of English language um, study and study support that sits alongside your program that happens each week to keep developing your English skills um, once you get here. I think it's one of the things I studied abroad when I was a student, I went to America for a year and that was quite scary just going away for a year to study. And at least in America, they were teaching the same language. It's one of the most difficult things to come to another country, which isn't your first language. And I'm sure all of your English will be way better than my Vietnamese, way better than my Mandarin, you know, way better than my Portuguese. So you're already doing much, much better than I, I will have done. And we have a vice chancellor, a vice chancellor who uh, comes from Palestine. And he talks about how when he came to study in the United Kingdom many, many years ago, he couldn't speak a word of English when he came. But you learn as you go along. I think there are things that you'll find difficult. There are things that you won't understand to begin with. And you just have to accept, okay, I don't understand things, but as I'm here for a long period of time, I will develop and learn. And my English guaranteed after three years of being with us or seven years for this student that, um, that I studied, uh, that I taught when they were on their undergraduate degree, um, 
they're now writing a PhD in English. So things take time. You don't get better at everything overnight, um, but we are there to support you, support you in that as, as, as best we can. Somebody else has asked about the tuition, the tuition fees. Um, uh, again, we've got a link to our tuition fees that's on our website, and Jamie will um, put that in. But again, you can just go into Google and type UCA tuition fees international. We'll, we'll upload that that link um, that that link for you. Um, you've asked what are the necessary necessary conditions that um, what are the qualifications that you might require to join us at our university? Somebody else has asked. Um, now it varies from different from person to person. Now we would expect if you're joining us for an undergraduate course that while she's been studying at high school or secondary school, you will have been focusing in an area of art and design and you'll have a portfolio of work in that area. Now, it might be that you haven't had a chance within your own, um, within your own specialist, um, within your own school to really specialize in something that you might be interested in, which is why we run what we call the International Foundation. So we have, sometimes have students who are a bit worried about their portfolio and they have a little bit more time in the lead up to a degree. So we offer them a place on the degree and they have a bit more time to do what we call an IFAD, International Foundation degree. And that helps them to get that portfolio ready to join straight into one of our undergraduate programs. But I think the key thing in your application alongside a portfolio and evidence of your interest in the subject that you're studying um, is, to, is your, you showing us your energy and vitality um, for studying in the, creative, in the creative subjects. For students interested in, applicants interested in master's subjects doing an MA with us, then we would be um, looking for a relevant undergraduate um, uh, subject that's related to the subject that you're, you're applying into. Um, but even saying that, I've just, I've just given a place to somebody this year, who's, uh, last week, who was studying um, a business subject, wants to study fashion design, um, not quite ready to go straight onto the fashion design course. And again, we've got a graduate diploma that you can do for a short period of time before you join the master's, um, master's course. We have an incredibly uh, international postgraduate um, community here at the university from all around the world. Um, and I used to run the master's programs in fine art for the university. And it was one of the greatest pleasures was to hear stories, get the sense of people's different imaginations, depending on what cultures they've come from. Um, so I hope that answers that question. Somebody's asked again about, uh, somebody's asked about um, if the course is computer based. All our courses, almost all our courses are both respectful of the history of the discipline, but also understand that we are we are developing creative thinkers for the future. And so that relationship between analog technologies and digital technologies, computer technologies, is really, really important. And so depending what course you're on, that relationship to using computers and things being computer-based um, will vary, but is at the heart of a number of the subjects that we, that we teach on. So if you think about computer games art, we teach an undergraduate course in computer games art at a Farnham campus. It's got computer in the, in the title. We teach a course in computer, um, computer programming for, for architecture um, at our, within our School of Architecture at Canterbury. So computers and digital technology is at the heart of that. But for any subject, whether it's graphic design, whether it's architecture, whether it's fashion, that use of technology to support different ways of thinking about the thing you're interested in, and developing your skills in terms of technology is really, really important. There's some lovely messages here from, from hmm. people to other people saying, uh, good luck with your application. So that's really, really nice to hear. I've got another couple of questions in, um, uh, in the Q&A. Pat Shu has a question about whether we have a, a master's in food technology. We don't have a master's in food um, technology, um, even though you've got 10 years of experience there. Um, so I can't really advise you around, around that. We don't do food technology within our particular university. But it sounds like you're really focused on what you want to do, Patchu, and, and really, really good luck with, um, with, with uh, looking for that, for that right place 
um, for you to study in that area. I think that's all our questions. Um, I'm gonna, Jamie's nodding. <laughs> I don't think I've missed anything. Uh, so I think that leads me to say, thank you very, very much for um, spending an hour of your time with me. I hope I've kept you awake. Um, I hope I, you've learned something about the University for the Creative Arts and about creative education and its value um, for the industry. So I'm getting lots of thank yous. So thank you back, mutual appreciation. Um, have a great rest of the day, wherever you are in the world. I think some of you are probably just about to go to bed. Some of you have just woken up early in the morning. I'm now gonna go and answer a whole range of emails and I've got a couple of meetings, but this has definitely been the highlight of my day. So thank you to everybody. Over to you, Jamie. Excellent. If I could just add a final thank you as well from us here at Integrate, Terry, thank you so much for presenting. Thank you everyone for joining us in the session today. Uh, we're going to be back on Friday with another UCA webinar uh, presented by Dr. Neil Bottle um, on craft and design, uh, all that remains. So if you're interested in craft and design, learning a bit more about this subject, you can join us at the same time on Friday. So that feels great. Neil's great. He's got slightly longer hair than me, but it's great. And it's greyer. <laughs> so looking forward to meeting him then. Excellent. Thank you so much, Terry. It's great to see You're you. You're welcome, Jamie. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you, guys. Bye for now. Bye. -bye.